Waka Waka AA 30 signings who gives a f The Reds are staying up, but should someone actually give a f With this day and age and FFP, are Forest in danger of breaching this? And should we as a fan base care? And just how far off are Forest from getting themselves in trouble? Welcome to this special edition on FFTV. Hello and welcome to this special episode on FFP. You guys have requested it and asked for it. One, to be explained, but two, and more importantly, what will its impact be on Nottingham Forest and just how far away are we from it? We all live through the highs, the lows, the tears, the smiles, the joys of the last Premier League season. And it all came to a head on that beautiful day at the city ground against Arsenal, where Forest were confirmed yet again in the Premier League for this coming season, the 23-24 campaign. We were used to, as a fan base, many players last summer coming in. In fact, we signed 22 to 23 players and 30 players overall, as the famous song now goes. But this summer window has started a lot, lot slower. There's only been one official signing confirmed, and that, of course, is Chris Wood. But this was a deal that was moved on from last January into this window for the sake of finances. And that got us thinking, why was that done? And is there some underlining costs that Forrest are worried about? As FFP seems to be on everyone's forefront right now. So let's start by casting our minds back about 12 months ago on that beautiful day in Wembley, May the 29th, 2002. The final whistle goes and Forest are again a Premier League club. But Forest had to go through the playoffs, which actually cost them about two weeks in terms of transfer windows and negotiation times. Add on to that a Winter World Cup and an earlier start in the Premier League season, which condensed the summer transfer window down even even further. Us as a fan base, we're probably going to be happy if we're being honest with ourselves with buying the lonely players that we already had. The likes of Jed Spence, the likes of Jimmy Garner, the likes of Keenan Davis. These were all fan favorites and all players that we thought were in our reach. But come then the Greek father and Maranakis, and he starts to pull out his wallet. We actually started with our first signing not too long ago a year today with Taiwo Iwani joining Forest from Hertha Berlin for a reported fee of about 17 and a half million. And then following on from him, the loan knee of Dean Henderson from Manchester United. And the name started to get bigger and bigger as we saw the likes of Nia Kate, Jesse Lingard, Morgan Gibbs White for record values to name but a few just starting to join in. And it felt like Christmas every other day as a new player was either linked or signed to Nottingham Forest. But this was bringing the attention of the footballing world onto Nottingham Forest. What are they doing? Are they trying to do a Fulham? Are they just buying anything in the sweet shop and trying to buy their way into the Premier League? Us as Forest fans had to sit there and defend the strategy from Marinakis and his guys. And it was a defense that needed to carry on for the rest of that year. And if defending 22 odd players in the summer wasn't enough, Maranakis goes and pulls the checkbook out again in January with Scarpa, who was a done deal in the previous window, Danilo coming in for 18 million. You had Navas, a three times Champions League winner, joining Nottingham Forest, and then Shelby and Chris Wood joining, to name but a few. Another six players in total were added, and this caused more and more questions and debates about how much money have Forest spent and where are they raising their funds from. If you look at the actual net spends across the Premier League, Forest were in the top six throughout the year 22-23, spending a total of 181 million there or thereabouts, with money going out of only 4.28 million. And that was competing with some of the big boys. Forest were only 40 million behind the likes of Newcastle, Arsenal, Tottenham, Manchester United, and Chelsea. These were the only clubs to outspend Forest throughout the previous season. And the question was, how? 
But before we can answer that question, we need to go back and reflect on how we got to where we are now. As Forrest were under the resentful regime of Fawaz al Hasawi, and it wasn't until the Greek father, Mr. Maranakis, came in did we start to see progress. Forest were under FFP sanctions before. Back in 2015, they had a transfer embargo put on them as they breached FFP regulations, along with Leeds United and Blackburn Rovers. And a year later, Marinakis did try to buy the club, but it was a failed attempt. And it wouldn't be until May 2017 where he could finally get his hands on the club, alongside with his Greek business buddy, Socrates Komenakis, who now owns a 20% minority stake in Forest, with Mr. Maranakis owning 80% of it. This would be Evangelos Maranakis' second club after his purchase of Olympiakos in August 2010. A Maranakis, whose net worth is reportedly to be in excess of 650 million, has made his money in the shipping business. He's the founder and chairman of Capital Maritime and Trading Corp, and also has experience in the governance of football through his role as vice president for the Hellenic Football Federation and president of Super League in Greece. So football has always been a passion for Maranakis, and growing his empire is something that he really wanted to achieve. But taking Nottingham Forest back to the promised land, the Premier League, was always going to be his number one priority with what he wanted to do with the club. But as an outstanding businessman, he knew that investment would be needed to get those dreams through. It started off rough. The first few years were not great, but Forrest then finally made it back into the Premier League last season. But how much did it cost them and could it cost them long term? Well, let's get into the financial fair play and let's start by explaining exactly what financial fair play is to you. Now, we're going to keep this on a layman's basis to help everyone understand it. Everyone hears the term FFP branded around in football every other day, pretty much. And we're going to take this time now just to explain it to you in its simplest form. So FFP was established by UEFA in 2009 and it was implemented at the start of the 2011-2012 season. The basic idea behind FFP was to make sure that clubs did not spend more than they earned and in doing so preventing them from falling into financial disarray, turmoil and threatening their existence as a club. But really what it was designed to do as well was stop the nation states coming in, the likes of Saudi, Qatar, etc., all the Arab world states, for example, and coming in and just throwing money left, right and centre at the club. If they were to buy a small club with small revenue and small income, but then go ahead and buy your Mbappes, Neymars and Messis and just chuck money into it, the sustainability would be absolutely rocked. So that was the design of it and why FFP came in. So in terms of the actual FFP rules, they state that clubs over a three year rolling period cannot make a loss of more than 105 million. And this is in the Premier League. If a club were to breach these, then that would automatically put them under the scrutiny of FFP and potentially up for sanctions. And those sanctions can vary from fines to point deductions, to relegations out the league, to, to titles being stripped, to even transfer embargoes as we've seen with Nottingham Forest in the past and as we're currently seeing now with the likes of Man City and Everton all under FFP scrutiny. However there are things under FFP that have complete exemptions and that's things like training facilities, investment in youth or the ladies football teams um, infrastructure, all of this expenditure wouldn't come under the scrutiny of FFP. So things like that don't need to be accounted for. So for example, if a club's turnover was 100 million, and then you look at the wages and other football related expenses being 60 million, that would then leave you a net total of 40 million. And with the 35 million that you are allowed to spend over, that would give you potentially a transfer budget of 75 million. Now remember that 35 million that I just spoke of comes from the 105 million rolling total that you could technically split over those three years equating to 35, 35 and 35. 
However, things aren't quite that simple for Nottingham Forest because the rules in the Championship are different to those in the Premier League. And in a nutshell, where you can take a 35 million loss in the Premier League, you're only allowed a 13 million loss in the Championship. Therefore, Forest still have some residue from the Championship regulations into the Premier League regulations. So the 13 million from the season we got promoted will now still count at the end of this FFP three year rolling cycle. So Forest will have, or should be allowed, shall I say, losses of 13 million, 35 million, and 35 million. So let's put some actual numbers up against this that are related to Nottingham Forest. We can look at their actual profit and lost accounts. Now, at the end of the period for June 2021, Forest ended up with a £15.5 million loss. In the following year, ending June 2022, Forest made a loss of £45.6 million. And then if we consider this coming year, we don't actually know the numbers yet as obviously they are yet to be published. However, what we do know is that Forrest spent in and around £180 million on transfers. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it comes out this year, but it will probably and most likely be spread out during the lengths of those contracts. For, so for example, Danilo cost Forrest around £18 million on a six and a half year deal. That 18 million will be split over that term and it will equate to say roughly 2.7 million a year. But the Chris Wood deal, as we go on about a lot on this channel, was a four million pound loan fee, which would have come out of the uh, budget for that year and a 15 million pound transfer fee on a one year deal. And that means that 15 million pounds has to be paid back and put on the books for this year. In terms of actual incomings for revenue for Forest, we do know that with the Premier League comes the fruits and Forest probably made somewhere in and around 100 to 120 million. A lot of that would have been TV revenue money. There's been one sale of Samba, which generated about 4 million. But again, that will be paid back to Forest depending on what agreements were put in place for that contract. So this is a major problem for Nottingham Forest as their income coming in from player sales is extremely small in comparison to the majority of the Premier League clubs. And this may be one of the reasons we've seen the likes of Craig Mullahan and Ross Wilson come in to address this and maybe why Gary Brazil was moved on as although we've had some superstars coming out of the academy, we haven't had what you would consider potentially a profit train coming out with players that could be loaned out and then sold for high profit margins as these players are considered as zero expense as you've trained them through your academy and then you sell them off and all that can go towards your bottom line. We've seen this many times in footballing models. Chelsea is obviously the prime example of how they loan out their youth players and then we've seen recently they've sold Mason Mount for 65 million and that helps them tremendously with FFP. This is something that Forest have not been good at over the last few years. And I believe this is one of the reasons why we saw Brazil moved on and the new people coming in to address this. So with all these numbers in mind, it's still very hard to give you a concrete number on where Forest are and how far, far Forest are away from breaching FFP. But what we can say with certainty is that they're not a million miles off and expecting to see a summer window like we saw last season is definitely miles away from the table right now. And this is why we've seen these links towards Brennan Johnson and talking about selling a couple of players, the likes of Dennis going to name but a few. This may be to balance the books when it comes to FFP. After all, football is a business and Forest do have to run it in that manner. So the likelihood that Brennan Johnson could be sold may be slim at the moment, but if FFP is getting tight for Nottingham Forest, then it may actually be a serious consideration they will have to take. So in summary, does this mean that Forest cannot buy any players this summer and the belt has to be tightened? Absolutely not. But does it mean we're going to have another wacker wacker 30 players coming in? That too is definitely off the cards. Forrest will have to get rid of some players. One, because they probably don't fit in with Steve Cooper's plans. But two, as well, to create the income. Because that income column is so low for Nottingham Forest now when it comes to passing players on and out from the club. 
So do still expect a few signings coming in this window, but do understand that football is a business and it has to be run like one. And as excited and as passionate as we want to get or frustrated as fans, we've got to understand that there are regulations that Forest must work to and stay within to make sure that they are compliant with the FFP rules. Now, this is a very, very light touch video in terms of what the regulations mean. As we said earlier, just because Forrest made losses of 15 million and 45 million, they do not necessitate that those come under the scrutiny of FFP because there will be plenty of other things in there that get stripped out and put into other places. So hope this video has helped you somewhat understand at a very basic level how FFP works and that what the impact it potentially could have on Nottingham Forest. If you've enjoyed the video, please don't forget as always to hit that like button, subscribe to FFTV if you are new. We'll see you on the next video and come on you Reds.